Today, we're going to examine a podcast that Dax Shepard did with Erica Christensen. Dax has many friends who are Scientologists. Almost unilaterally, all the Scientologists I know. Yeah. Very happy, pretty damn healthy, pretty productive, pretty responsible, great communicators. So when I can I can get bogged down in like, you know, the history of L. Ron Hubbard and certain things like this, or I kind of just go like, Fuck, man, I know 12 of them, they're super duper happy and they're doing their thing. And I can just look at the results of this thing and I can say whether or not I agree with it. It's totally working for you guys. We have a lot of mutual friends where I'm like, yeah, they're some of my favorite people and they're happy as hell. In this podcast, Dax tries to rationalize the teachings of L. Ron Hubbard in Scientology. I'm going to try and defeat his arguments, many of which will be false comparisons. Okay, without further, wait, wait, wait. Many of you who listen have not yet subscribed. Can you help us out and tick the subscribe button? It's free. You may as well hit the like button as well. Now, without further ado, let's listen to Dax Shepard and Erica Christensen defend the cult of Scientology. Hello. Welcome to the Armchair Expert. This is Dax Shepard, your host. I'm joined with Monica, your co-host. Hello. And um, before we get into this episode, which is with my um, ever-beautiful, talented TV sister, Erica Christensen. Well, before we get into Scientology, because I want to, because you and I have had many great conversations over the years about it, because we worked together for six years, and I like talking about that kind of stuff, and you are very open about it. I love that you're curious about deeper things, like what do people actually believe, not just like, yes, what are you driving? And um, I think it'd be useful for me to give... Um, because I can take either side of the argument, which I'm a fan of doing. If I'm talking Great. to people who are super critical of Scientology, these are the things I'll point out. You're going to definitely correct me, but I'm just going to go against the the common perception of some things. Okay. But let's just say I'm talking with somebody and he goes, that person says, oh, they make, they believe in aliens. Okay. And then they say, oh, and they got to pay all this money to be in the religion. Mm-hmm. And then I point out, Okay, let's say they believe in aliens. I find aliens to be, at least scientifically speaking, a lot more plausible than a man in the sky that has a beard who had a son who Mm -hmm. sent the son down to planet Earth only to be killed to come back up to him. Yet there's still three of them. There's those two and the Holy Ghost. That isn't more plausible than aliens. So just if the genesis of, of both religions, you can't say one's crazier just by its concept. Even if you believe there's aliens. Again, this is where you'll probably go, we don't believe in aliens. But even if you do or don't, let's just say you do for the sake of this. Oh, sure. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> I think I do. Okay, great. I think, yeah, I think it's pretty plausible. Like the fact that we would be completely alone in this universe. Well, there's billions implausible. and billions of stars just within our cluster. And we're, a, yeah. Yes. We're in a cluster of galaxies that are a cluster of cluster of cluster of it's yeah the, the universe is infinite yeah so from the get-go you know it's it's not more preposterous than any of our main uh religions uh in judeo christian or islam uh and then money you gotta pay a lot of money to go go through the ranks well to that i say my grandparents were baptists and they they were expected to and did give 10 percent of their income to mm-hmm. the church yeah one of the five pillars of Islam is donations. So there is generally a financial commitment to any major religion. So in that, there's nothing really different. And then third, oh, there are people there that are, they'll say slaves that work for nothing to blah, blah, blah. And I'll say, how much are the choir boys getting? How much are the guys who carry the stuff in the Catholic procession? Like the, the service to your church is also very, very, very normal. And then to your point, which I think we should get out from the get-go, and I'm glad you said it, is you have your take on Scientology. You're not speaking for Scientology. You're not saying what everyone's relationship with it. I, I too, am in a group that people think is a cult, which is AA. And there are as many different people that you know at your crowded bar room. That's how many different kinds of people are in AA. So you could meet someone in AA who's a fucking lunatic. No question. Sure. And his interpretation of AA, I might think, is batshit crazy. Uh, And his likewise of mine he would think was crazy right so um i don't think either of us will be speaking for either of our organizations uh at all right uh with that said what is also unique about you is is there are in my experience with scientologists in la which i know probably a dozen yeah there are people who found it 
And there are people that were raised Scientologists. Right. And you were raised Scientologists, correct? Right. It's funny because I like to really be specific about that, too, because it's hard to it's hard to raise someone as a Scientologist because it's something that you do. It's not something that you believe. And so my parents definitely are Scientologists. Mm hmm. Um, approached parenting from a Scientology viewpoint. I know, I know that now as an adult, I can see that in in the way that they approached me as a kid and really trying to trying to do what I'm doing now as a parent, which is trying to temper absolutely necessary discipline and rules and structure with fostering independent thought and and freedom of personality you know just it has to be true for you Mm -hmm. it can't like don't take anybody's word for anything ever basically right without being a cynic or without being you know closed mind some kind of paranoiac yeah it's just the what do you have if you don't have yourself Mm -hmm. so that and then various things like you know drinking and drugs and stuff like that. We yeah. basically think it's counterproductive. Like right. if you get right drugs, down to it, it. And again, I'll point out yeah. my understanding of it. And you can tell me if I'm wrong, but sure. drugs for sure is, and that's just off the table for yeah. Scientologists, right? Yeah. Uh, drinking is allowed and yeah, right. Absolutely. Scientologists drink, but, yeah. but they generally do not do drugs and are, are strongly urged never to do drugs. Yes. Yes. B- because it's, it as the, action of Scientology when you are picking apart the chronology of your life and its effects upon you, it really helps to have that lucidity. Uh huh. And so like, it's almost now I'm circling back to the other topic, but it's almost just selfish on my part. Uh huh. Like I want to be able to remember everything. Uh I want to be smart. You want to be at your peak. I do. And I, and I, and I want to consider that, I'm always just driving toward the my best self. Yes. You were homeschooled. Was that based on being Scientologist or being a child actor or a combination of both? Being an actor. Okay. Yeah, that was that was a practical thing because I was spending so much time like in classes and auditions and uh-huh. work and all that stuff. So but um communication being just the key to solving any problem. Mm-hmm. Um that's I, I feel like that's where my parents really also succeeded in making themselves safe to talk to. Yeah. Do you care to share how the church is helping you? No, because the first rule about Scientology is don't talk about Scientology. The first rule of Fight Club is you do not talk about Fight Club. Yeah. So that when I did go and say I had my first beer... I told them Mm -hmm. instead of going, I'm going to be in such deep shit. Like I can't do that. And then driving and like really getting into that, the phenomena of just teenager dumb where everything they say is wrong, no matter what it is. And, you know, and just like, it's so defensive. Mm -hmm. I never had to be so defensive because I was like, "Eh, well, this happened. Well, let's just say that you did take the, the, the path of um, either I'm going to lie about it or yeah. or I'm going to be in trouble. So now your brain gets very busy going, OK, so I'm going to be in trouble. So I'm going to explain to them. Well, Mike and Jenny also drink. Right. <laughs> and, so, and, you know, I'm the only person that doesn't drink. Right. So now you're creating this entire uh, chatter in your head, this fake uh, argument that's going to ensue. Yeah. And you're in your you're bolstering your side of the case. Right. right. So now you're occupying your whole brain with your side of the case that's inevitably coming your way. <laughs> yep. Or you're going to lie to him and now you're building like, well, I, did you drink tonight? No, because we went to Kathy's and Kathy's mom is uh, uh, evangelical oh, yeah. and there's no booze in that. You like both so exhausted. You're off, yeah, you're completely off to the races, right? In, in either direction. And you you dig your heels in so hard when you know that like when you're going, well, well Mike and Jenny also drink it. Da, 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 da. So you can't own it. You can't be like, I'm not sure if that was the right thing to do mm-hmm. if you're if you are already on the defense. Right. Yeah. It would yeah. be a defeat to admit error. Exactly. Right. It's me against you right now and I have to win this. And which mm-hmm. is always the case. Right. With like all of life, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And and they were never like, you need to go to church. Welcome to Sunday service. We're gonna give you a little exercise on control with a group process by the same pilot. All you have to do. Shall we begin? Yeah. Sit in your chair. It's easy to do. 
Easy enough, isn't it? Sit in your chair. Very good. Sit in your chair. Very good. Sit in your chair. All right. Sit in your chair. Are you sitting in your chair? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Very good. Sit in your chair. That's right. Sit in your chair. Good. Sit in your chair. Okay. Sit in your chair. Good. Sit in your chair. All right. Now, are you sitting in your chair? Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Sit in your chair. Thank you. Sit in your chair. Very good. Sit in your chair. All right. Sit in your chair. Good. Sit in your chair. The next command is quite similar. The automated command is wear a head. Got that? Wear a head. Wear a head. All right. Wear a head. All right. Let's do that again. Wear a head. Wear a head. Wear a head. Wear a head. Very good. Wear a head. Thank you. Wear a head. Okay. Wear a head. Very good. Wear a head. Good. Wear a head. Okay. And once more. Wear a head. Thank you. Wear a head. Good. <laughs> okay. Or anything like that, too. It was like, this is what we're interested in. These are the, some of the things that we believe. Oh, so you were not required. They no. didn't go like, oh, you're, go- you're going in. We're- you're taking a tour. You're no, like, never. No, it was like, we think this is a good idea. Uh-huh. B- would you check it out? You mm-hmm. know, and always with the choice and always. I was like, yeah, sure. Uh-huh. I mean, I was a kid. I was like, well, it sounds cool to me. Fine. And then when I actually, when I was like 12, I started doing a bunch of the little introductory courses that they still have now that a few hours maybe uh-huh. each. And, and they're guided so, by some type of teacher. They're not a teacher. It's a supervisor because okay. it's between you and the text. But okay. if you're, if you get stuck, not Struggling. understanding something, the dictionary, they're right there, mm-hmm. you know, they're going to help you out. Success through communication, right? How to, how to genuinely communicate one person to another, not just like talk at each other or, or and there's a really simple thing about this, too. It's been explained to me by yeah. one of our mutual friends, which, yes, when when Scientologists talk to people, they're they're committed to listening. Right. Isn't there's like a specific approach to listening? Well, it's literally just that it's my turn to be receiving you. Mm. If, if you are talking to me, I'm not supposed to be talking to you. I'm supposed to be listening to you. What about planning the next thing you're going to say while you're talking to me? <laughs> no, that's not listening. Oh, oh bummer. <laughs> because what, whatever it is, <laughs> uh, you could give uh, an example as if we're just playing ball, right? Mm-hmm. So I can't be throwing and catching at the same time. You've got the ball, you're throwing to me, and I, that means I'm catching. Yeah. And once I've received the ball... Cool. Which is also an acting exercise that they play yeah. with young kid mm-hmm. actors. Okay, so it, it, when so then what what uh, physical steps like when you you I'm sure find yourself in situations where it's very chaotic and all this is happening and what what is it that you tell yourself to steady yourself and and be able to focus? It's basically like, well, say it's a decision that needs to be made. Yeah. Is that like yeah. so? Yeah. You have all these factors, and basically the the step by step process that I could put myself through is it's it's actually it's written out by L. Ron Hubbard and it's called the doubt formula. Uh-huh. And you can go through it and basically I mean it's it's like a an expansion of like a pros and cons list where you evaluate what are my intentions for this thing and uh-huh. then what are this what are the other intentions and then did the intentions and actions of these two things match up? I'm naturally not drawn to Scientology. How much of the critique have you consumed? Any of it? No, because I don't think that it comes from an actual place of like your critiques of like, I don't think it comes from critical thinking. I th- Follow us on YouTube at Windy City Thetan Watch. We do live protests, studio panels, and curated videos.